John chapter 12. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls onto the ground and dies, it remains alone. Uh -huh. But if it dies, it produces much wheat. Uh -huh. Verse 25. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep of eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. I titled my message today, No Harvest Without Death. Before you see harvest, something must die. Even when a seed is planted, can that seed germinate without death? No, Papa. But the seed is dying to come back with harvest. When we go in context here, Jesus is saying a lot of things here to his disciples and to me and you today. Amen. Amen. Jesus is trying to prepare his disciples for his death. Mm. That's what we have in that, co that context. He was preparing them for his death. Yes, my father. But the disciples were not understanding. Yes, my father. So because of their lack of understanding, he had to bring a sweet parable. He had to bring a sweet parable. And that sweet parable is just in two lines. Mostly I show you. Mm. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains the same. This is predicting his death. And preparing them. The disciple will not want to hear that. He tried to make tell them in, in other passages that he will soon go, but they never wanted to hear that. They said, oh, this man has been our Lord. This man has been performing miracles. It's not good that he should go. Amen. Amen. And to them, if he goes, they are not protected. Mm. Because even when they caught Jesus, the disciples were hiding. Oh, and their master is not there. Mm. So how would they allow Jesus to go? How would they allow their master to go? So it was not possible for them to allow Jesus to go. So they were refusing. They refused to accept that fact. And Jesus had to bring this parable to explain. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus tells them this simple, beautiful parable, unless a grain falls on the ground into the earth and dies, it cannot produce. Jesus is telling them here that his death is absolutely necessary. If there is going to be new life, then he must die. True, Papa. Because if he doesn't die, there will be no new life. Yes, Daddy. Am I talking to somebody? You are talking, my father. There is going to be new life. That's what I say. No harvest without death. If there is going to be a new life, because if Jesus do not go, the disciples remain the way they were. Jesus is the firstborn to be born again. Hallelujah. Amen. And he is not going to keep way for the Holy Spirit to come upon the disciples so that they themselves can have a comforter, a teacher, a strengthener mm. in their life. Oh, yes. So that even the things that Jesus taught them, they could not comprehend. The Holy Spirit now will be bringing into them in their spirits. Yes, and if Jesus does not go, the Holy Spirit can reside in them. True, Papa. So it was necessary for Jesus to go. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus is that one seed that died and brought redemption to the whole world. He is dying so that there can be harvest. He is that one seed that died to produce harvest. And this is a harvest all over the world. City studying his word, yes, Papa. Disciples, they are disciples to honor him, yes, Papa. Because of that one seed that died, we have many that that seed has produced, amen. Many that have new life, yes, Papa, amen, amen. But what is this scripture? What, is, what, how does it relate to us today? Is it only to be disciples? No, sir. No, it's not only to be disciples because without, without uh, no harvest without death. Mean that you too, you have to 
Something has to die in your life. Yes, Papa. God has chosen to bring new life into the world. That unless Jesus dies, no fulfillment. There will be no fulfillment on earth. Jesus was the single seed whose dead brought forth abundant fruits. And we are the fruit. But today, this is to teach us that God works through the process of death and resurrection. Mm. That is the process. He works through the process of death and resurrection. For example, Lazarus died. Hallelujah. Amen. But there was a harvest after. Yes, Papa. Amen. There was a harvest after his death. What was that harvest? The power of God was manifested True, because of his death. Yes, Papa. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus himself died to have this harvest. You yourself, you must also die to your flesh in order to inherit what God has for us. No harvest without death. Yes, Papa. He made a statement here. He said, he said, most assuredly, eh, verse 25, he who loves his life will lose it. Yes, Papa. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. life. If you love your life, you will lose it. What does it mean here? The day you receive Christ, your life does not remain it belongs to you. Yes, Papa. The day you receive Christ, your life does not belong to you. Yes, Papa. He controls your life. I know there are people that they keep giving their life to Christ and taking it back. Mm. They give it on Monday or Tuesday, they take it back. Say, it is my life. <laughs> they don't want him to be Lord over their life. Mm. When they say Lord over your life, means that he controls your life. Amen. Amen. Eh? He yes, directs Papa. you what to do, what to say. Now, if you have received Christ, He takes control over your life. Mm. Amen. Your life does not belong to you. He is the controller of your life. So, if you love your life, you can't receive Christ. You can't do the things you do with your own things that you love. You serve Him the way you like, not the way He wants you to serve Him. You serve him the way you want to serve him. That means your life is still with you and you will lose it. Hmm. Because you love your life more than the ones that died for redemption of the world. So you keep holding your life. You keep holding the pride. You keep holding the anger. You keep holding the character. You say what you know is what you know. And when people talk to you, you say, ah, my brother, that is how I was born. What have you not surrendered to God? On your own, you can't make it. The Bible says, with man, it is impossible. Oh, yes. But with God, oh, all things, things are possible. possible. Elisha didn't have his double portion Why Elijah was alive. Yes, Papa. Until when he died, the double portion, the mantle came down to tell you that there cannot be harvest without death. Don't just go about praying and fasting without checking what surrounds you. Yes, Papa. What surrounds you may be what is hindering your fasting and your prayers. No, Papa. Check your life. Is there anything I haven't killed in my life? Because prayers, where flesh is alive, can go to no way. True, Daddy. Prayer, when your flesh is still alive, you will hear yourself. Mm. Others will hear you, but mm. God is not hearing you. True, Papa. Because there is somebody inside of you mm. that is blocking the prayers. Yes, Daddy. From reaching the sea. Mm. So, it's a check on your character. Even your little prayer will be answered. Amen. Check on your flesh. If your flesh is alive, some people's flesh is alive in the era of alcohol. Some people flesh in the area of loss. Yes, Papa. Some people flesh in the area of pride. You are talking, sir. Some people flesh in the area 
of uh, immorality. Yes, sir. Am I talking to somebody? You are talking, my father. The moment they skip this and they are now on fasting, that flesh that is in, that is in pride has no died. It's still alive. It will empower you. Mm. As it empowers you, there is no way for you to make contact with the glory of God. Because God is holy. Mm. Amen. 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 So, before you engage in fasting, look at your life. What are the things I haven't yet killed? What are the things Jesus says, surrender this ones to me? That I have not yet surrendered. What are the things that I have not yet let go? Jesus said, let go. You cannot let go. You are fasting. 